It is therefore time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. In August of 2016, a report from the Ombudsman of Ontario entitled Nowhere to Turn highlighted the recommendations from the Select Committee on Developmental Services to improve service delivery for de developmentally disabled Ontarians. Speaker, for the past nine years, the developmental services sector, led by the Ontario Agency supporting individuals with special needs, has experienced a lack of annual financial investment. Speaker, 23 per cent of government-funded community agencies are at risk for financial crisis, with an additional 56 per cent at moderate risk after facing nine years of zero increases in their budgets. Speaker, the longer that the Ontario Agency supporting individuals with special needs goes without additional investment, tenuous situations will continue to grow and negatively impact service delivery for a vulnerable community. Speaker, these communities need and deserve the government's support and commitment. It's not right or fair, Speaker, to leave this substantial financial burden on Ontario families. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, uh, members. Further member statements, the member from Kenora, Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. It is an honour to rise and deliver one final statement in this House as the member of Kenora, Rainy River. Throughout my short time in this place, I have always been a northerner first, believing that northern issues are too important to become a casualty of partisan political wrangling. I held dear the advice imparted to me by the former member of Trinity Spadina, Mr. Rosario Marchese, who cautioned me to remember who elected me. For me, this was always easy to do, as there's always been so much work to do to make Northwestern Ontario and make sure that Northwestern Ontario uh, gets a fair deal. Much of the work here that I've done has been on ensuring that Northerners have a robust health care system where no one is left behind due to their inability to pay or their postal code, a safe, reliable network of roads and transportation options, low hydro costs for residents and industry, a positive, respectful relationship with Indigenous populations, thriving local economies with stable employment and resource revenue sharing with Northern communities, affordable child care, appropriate senior care, and overall respect for our northern culture and values. I wish the two new members who will represent Kenora Rainy River following the election the very best of luck. I sincerely hope that they too will remember who elected them and that they remain fierce defenders of the north above all else. This focus has always meant more to us than party colors. Thank you. Thank you. And I too all to want to thank the member for her service. Further member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And today it is my honour and privilege to recognize Jean Domagala, the mayor of the beach. This past weekend, a local laneway in Old East Toronto was renamed of Jean Domagala Laneway, a permanent reminder of Jean's unparalleled contributions to our community. Jean is a local historian whose volunteering efforts and community leadership are legendary. He helps run the Santa Claus Funds Depot in Parkdale and is a tireless ambassador for Community Centre 55, a remarkable beach institution that runs a daycare, summer camps, a Christmas parade, senior services, and a holiday hamper program that serves nearly 100, uh, nearly 1,000 families. Jean is a leader who shows great shows others the importance of empathy. He holds up a sign during the Santa Claus Funds Depot that says, we deliver, we do not judge. And over the past four de decades, Jean has led historical preservation projects, including salvaging the Light Ludi Lifeguard Station, the an iconic landmark of the beach, as well as getting the name right on the Q Williams Cottage in Kew Gardens. He also started the Spring Sprint, a fundraising run in support of Beaches Recreation Centre, now in its 31st year, and Slobberfest, a special event for dog lovers whose highlight is a pet owner lookalike contest. Jean also, Speaker, runs a whole bunch of historical tours in our community. And I had the great fortune of being on one early in my career when he stopped in front of this beautiful house on Lyle Avenue, which has a big lion sticking out three-dimensional from the roof underneath the, uh, on the front of it. A grimace, I call it. It's a lion. And I looked at it, and he gave a bit of history of the house. Two weeks later, it came up for sale, and I bought it. So in, 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 with all you've done, Jean, I want to thank you for helping me find my residence in the Upper Beach. Thank you for all you do. You're a great inspiration to our community and a great friend. Thank you. Thank you. 
Further member statements? The member from Niagara West and Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario, Doug Ford, made a very exciting announcement that is going to help a lot of lower income people across the province of Ontario. Doug Ford's commitment is that under a PC government, if you are making minimum wage, you're going to pay no income tax at all. The Ontario PC leader's tax credit would exempt 623,000 low wage workers from paying the provincial portion of income taxes, saving them up to $800 a year and costing the province roughly $500 million. Mr. Speaker, that's money that the government is putting back that, that our government will put back into the pockets of hard-working Ontarians. The reality is that the impact of Bill 140 was not thought out well by this government. We've seen the impact of local job creators in Niagara West Glanbrook and across the province of Ontario, with jobs being lost in agriculture, uh, in, in uh, various other industries, including at Tickler Berries in my home riding of Niagara West Glanbrook, where they are competing in, interjurisdictional, uh, in an interjurisdictional economy against also American companies. Putting over $800 back in the pockets of hardworking Ontarians means that they can afford uh, more of life that has become more and more expensive under an Ontario Liberal government that has failed to listen to uh, the hardworking taxpayers of Ontario, the job creators of Ontario, and the families of uh, Ontario. I'm very proud to be supporting this legislation. I'm hearing lots of good things about it from, uh, my, from, from my riding, and I look forward to supporting it after June 7th. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you. Today I want to share the story of Nolan Cascanet and his family. Nolan is nine months old. He has been diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. His survival is dependent on a drug called Spinraza. Spinraza is not yet publicly funded in Ontario. Families should not have to endure the slow approval process for public funding as they watch their children degenerate. They should not have to rely on pharmaceutical companies or private insurance for access to this life-saving treatment. The Canadian Agency for Drug Technology and Health has recommended that Spinraza be covered for type 1 babies diagnosed before seven months of age who are not on life support. Nolan wasn't on life support at first diagnosis, but he is now. It was the only way to keep him alive. Nolan has already made great strides. He comes off the ventilator for over an hour each day, but Nolan is still technically on life support. Nolan's parents wanted me to emphasize that the CADTH position is essentially unethical. Nolan is not laying in a bed dying. He is learning how to live. Not offering or especially not continuing Spinraza to a patient on life support is like denying someone a kidney transplant because they are on dialysis. Biogen will fund Nolan two more doses if there is no decision, but if a funding decision is made that excludes him, doses covered by the company would stop. I want to thank the Premier's office for responding to my letter and contacting Nolan's parents. Ontario can lead in fast-tracking and reducing barriers to Spinraza. Please, let's get Spinraza approved for public funding. Let's not restrict access to this life-saving drug so that this beautiful little boy can live. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. Ontario's largest children's treatment centre, Erin Oak Kids, now has a new headquarters in Mississauga and three new state-of-the-art facilities to serve families with children with learning and developmental difficulties. New facilities in Brampton, Mississauga and Oakville will enable Erin Oak Kids to assist children and young adults with autism and other learning disabilities. Among my first visitors as a newly elected MPP in 2003, were parents of autistic children. Along with my MPP colleagues over the years, including current Brampton Mayor Linda Jeffrey, I have worked with the uh, province to expand funding for such programs as the Ontario Autism Program and to bring provincial funding to enable Erin Oak kids to offer families more choice, an ability to get some respite, and to offer kids the best staff and technology available to help them learn. In Erin Oak Kids' new headquarters, staff can better assess children's needs, can better identify their strengths and goals, and can properly plan interventions to enable kids and their families to live their lives with greater dignity. Congratulations to Erin Oak Kids' management and staff, to the Erin Oak Kids Foundation, particularly to President uh, Bridget Futrell and to the founder of the foundation, former President Linda Rothney, and also to the volunteers, to the families and the children whose lives will be uh, made better in this very new state-of-the-art facility at Erin Oak Kids in Mississauga. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. This week we learned more disturbing news from the independent and nonpartisan Auditor General. 
The Auditor General outlined in her report that the deficit is not, in fact, $6.7 billion, as the Liberal government has claimed, but a staggering $11.7 billion, nearly double their claim. With the Auditor's report, we now know that Ontario's net debt-to-GDP ratio is 40.1 per cent, and Ontario's debt is forecast to be $393 billion, $33 billion higher than what the government had reported. The Liberal government created their own accounting rules to make the size of their deficit much smaller than the tr actual cost. Paying for debt is currently the third highest expenditure in Ontario. This means that there are fewer tax dollars going to fund hospitals and schools or pay for the services we rely on. Instead, more money will be, have to be spent paying the interest on our debt. The Auditor General's report shows that the government inappropriately withheld the expenses related to their hydro plan after their years of waste and mismanagement. I am pleased that my leader, Doug Ford, has announced he will launch an independent commission of inquiry to get to the bottom of the deficit scandal. The independent commission of inquiry will build on the Auditor General's valuable public service work and finally restore integrity in the Government of Ontario's financial reporting. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I'd also like to congratulate and thank the Minera, uh, member from Kenora Rainy River for her service. Today in the House, we recognized uh, the day of mourning. On April 28th, across Ontario, in our communities, there will be ceremonies and gatherings that honour those killed, injured, and made ill. At those ceremonies and gatherings, we will all also recommit to making all workplaces safe. This Saturday, I'll be joining my colleagues, the Ottawa District Labour Council and many others at Vincent Massey Park at the CLC Monument in our ceremony. The park is not far from Heron Road Workers Bridge. Speaker, almost 52 years ago on August 10, 1966, the then under construction Heron Road Bridge collapsed, killing nine men and injuring 60 others. Lives were changed forever. I'd like to read the names of those men who lost their lives to honour and remember them. Leonard Baird, Clarence Beatty, Jean-Paul Guerin, Omer LaMadeleine, Edmund Newton, Lucien Regimbault, Dominic Romano, Raymond Tremblay, Joao Vegas. Wives lost their husbands. 30 children, 31 children were left without a father. Almost 52 years have passed, and it's important that we honour them through our work to ensure that everyone returns home at night safe and sound. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very happy to introduce in this legislation an excellent organization called the TAIBU in my Scarborough Rouge River writing. Taibu is a community health centre founded in 2008 and has been funded by the Ontario government. It provides a comprehensive primary health care programs and activities from Monday through Friday. This month marks the 10th anniversary for Taibu. Monday, around 80 women and 20 men from the community meet regularly to break social isolation. Tuesday. All the adults participate in this laughter yoga session and use uh, attending the City of Toronto cultural project called From the Margins to the Center. Wednesday, free lunch program is provided in partnership with the Muslim Welfare Center, 42 Police Division, Melbourne Presbyterian Church, and the One Love Melbourne for about the 200 socially isolated community members. Up to now, they have served over 21,000 meals. Thursday, the Jamaican Canadian Association provides dementia prevention management programs for seniors. Friday, the gentle access program for seniors. In 2016, Taibu was identified as the only primary care French language service provider. Another excellent new service is the indigenous mental health outreach that started in December 2016. I'm very proud to support the table since its inception. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's